Hello, in this problem we're going to graph this rational function and we're going to show all intercepts and asymptotes on the graph. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start basically by finding all of the asymptotes and um, all of the intercepts. So solution. Let's start with the um, intercepts. We'll start by finding um, perhaps the y-intercept. That's a pretty easy one. So to find any intercept, you set the other value equal to zero. So for example, to find the y-intercept, you simply set x equal to zero. To find the x-intercept, you set y equal to zero. You can think of this as being y. So we'll set x equal to zero. So r of zero is equal to. Now we'll just go to where all of the x's are and we'll put zeros there. It'll be two times zero squared, which is just zero. So you can just put zero minus 6 times 0, minus 7, all over 0 minus 4. These are just zeros, so we just get 7 over 4. So r of 0 is 7 over 4. It's a little bit smaller than 8 over 4, so it's a little bit smaller than 2. So as an ordered pair, we can write this as 0 comma 7 fourths. Let's do that. 0 comma 7 fourths. Okay, so that would be the y-intercept. I'm going to put that in a box. All right, let's go ahead and try to find um, the x-intercepts. I think there's going to be two. So to find the x-intercepts, we basically take the entire function and set it equal to zero. So 2x squared minus 6x minus 7 over x minus 4. And I don't believe that four is going to be, x minus four is going to be a factor of this. So there's no common factors here at all. So what we can do now is we can basically multiply both sides by x minus four. And I usually skip this step. I'll just show you these cancel. And then we end up with the numerator equal to zero. So as a general rule, um, whenever you have a fraction, so like if you have, uh, let me just show you over here. If you have a over b equal to zero, and um, you want to solve this, just multiply by b, okay? And then you just end up with a equals zero. So basically you can just set the numerator equal to zero. So uh, pretty, pretty useful. You do need to be careful, like, you know, if you have something like x squared minus one over x minus one, and if you neglect to cancel, you do end up with two answers for x-intercepts, uh, and one of them won't really work. So it's important to just make a note to make sure nothing's canceling, nothing like this is going on. All right, so to solve this, um, we can try to factor it if we are feeling very brave, <laughs> or, or we can try um, using completing the square, or we can try the quadratic formula. Let's go with the quadratic formula. So this will be our a, this will be our b, this will be our c. The quadratic formula tells us that x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac it's all being divided by two times a. At this point, all we do is we plug in a, b, and c uh, for our variables. So this will be equal to, so b is negative six, but it's already negative, so it'll become a six, plus or minus the square root. b is negative six, but we're squaring it, so it's 36, minus, and here's where I won't skip any steps, four, a is two, C is negative seven. And the reason I'm extra careful here is because of this possible, and it happened this time, double negative situation. So it's gonna become a plus, and then two A. So X is equal to six, plus or minus the square root of, big numbers here. So 36 plus eight times seven, eight times seven is 56. So it'll be 36 plus 56 over four. This is equal to six over four, plus or minus, and then 36 plus 56 is 92, so it's the square root of 92 over four. Uh, square root of 92 can probably be simplified quite a bit. Um, off the top of my head, I'm not like really like seeing a, a nice easy way to do it, um, but certainly two goes into it, right? Two goes into 92. 92 divided by two is, you know, 46. You can make like a factor tree and stuff and try to like, you know, break it down and stuff like that. Um, you could probably do, looks like 23, two, 
to so four times 23 yeah four times 23 would be would be uh 92 definitely that would that would work and so that means that we can basically write this as three halves plus or minus uh, the square root of four the square root of 23 over four this is equal to three halves plus or minus the square root of four is two so this is two square root of 23 over four go ahead and clean it up here so x is equal to three halves and then uh plus or minus so plus or minus the square root of 23 whoops square root of 23 over two because two goes into four twice so that was a lot of work to find um the uh the x-intercepts right quite a bit of work uh there and we have to graph this so we need to have some idea of you know what these numbers are um so the square root of 23 is a little bit smaller than the square root of 25 right so uh, something to keep in mind let's go ahead and write them down separately so one of them will be x equals three halves plus the square root of 23 over 2 and let's try to be bold here i mentioned um that the square root of 23 is smaller than the square root of 25 which is 5. so this is ab about two and a half and this is about one and a half so one and a half uh, plus two and a half so i'm going to do this check this out pre-calculators perhaps i was i wasn't around them but i'll pretend so it's approximately four uh, a little bit smaller than four right a little bit smaller than four and the other one would be x equals three halves minus square root of 23 over two so this is approximately 1.5 minus 2.5 which is approximately uh negative one right and again you can just use a calculator uh, i'm actually going to type it into my calculator now so let's see uh, three halves just so we get some exact decimals here plus the square root of 23 over 2 yeah 3.897 so the first one is just so smaller than 4 so that's pretty good for no calculator so I'll just say 3.9 and the other one the other one is three halves minus the square root of 23 over 2 this one would be negative uh, 0.9 Right, so very, very uh, interesting, right? That was a lot of work for that. Uh, so now we have all of the intercepts. Okay, so for the asymptotes, so asymptotes, I'm gonna go ahead and write the, uh, the original function down again so we can see it. I feel like we spent a lot of time on the x-intercepts on this one. R of x equals two x squared. I purposely picked one that looked a little bit like harder, right? This is from some random book. And this is x minus four. I haven't done this yet. The VAs. So to find the VAs, you simplify first if possible. There's no simplification possible here. And then you set the bottom equal to zero. VA stands for vertical asymptote. So we get this, and so we get x equals four. So that's going to be a vertical line, right? Vertical line. And whenever the degree in the numerator is exactly one higher than the degree in the denominator, you have what's called an oblique or a slant asymptote. So slant asymptote. And this happens, by the way, in this specific case, okay? So uh, to find it, you can use long division. So we have x minus four. It's being divided into two x squared minus six x minus seven. And so to start the division process, you ask yourself, what do you multiply by x in order to get 2x squared? So 2x, right? You're missing a 2x. And the way I do is I put it up here. I, I use matching. So I match the exponents. Again, what do you multiply by x in order to get 2x squared, 2x? And by the way, this is the process you do when you're looking for one of these. And you know it's one of these if this is exactly one higher, okay? Now you multiply. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 4 is negative 8x. And the way I do my long division is I put parentheses here, and I put a really giant minus sign, and then I add, okay? So adding these, so we're distributing, we get 0. Adding these, we get negative 6x plus 8x, that's 2x. Bring down the negative 7. Then we do it again. What do you multiply by x in order to get 2x? 2. Then 2 times x is 2x. 
2 times negative 4 is negative 8. And you can stop here, by the way, uh, but I'm going to show you something cool, so I'm going to keep going. So we add here, so this is going to be negative 7 plus 8, so it's 1. The remainder is 1. Um, so the oblique asymptote is y equals 2x plus 2. All right, so here's the cool thing I wanted to show you. So we can take now, and this is not really, I don't think this is really going to help us in this problem at all, but um, let me just show you. If you take your original function, this is useful in calculus sometimes. It's equal to the quotient, so it's this piece here, 2x plus 2, plus the remainder, which is 1, over the divisor, which is x minus 4. So you can rewrite your function in a convenient way. So like in calculus, if you had to find uh, what's called the derivative of this function, you could do this and just take the derivative in like 5 seconds if you knew how to do it. This takes more work. This requires a quotient rule. Anyways, we're supposed to graph this thing. So let's do that. Here is the y-axis. Here's the x-axis. And I don't have any of this written down, so we're going to have to figure out what we have here. So um, there's a VA at 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and there's no horizontal asymptote. There's uh, an oblique asymptote or slant asymptote, but 2x plus 2. Uh, so let's see, when x is 0, y is 2. And um, when x is negative 1, y is 0. So this will be here. And this is our oblique or our slant. <laughs> notice, I, notice I bent it. It's a double slant because I was running out of room here in my graph. I need to have some, some graph area here, and I, I didn't draw it to scale. So... Um, that's how it works out though, right? Like, you know, normally you erase with a pencil and stuff, uh, but when you don't work out problems, like you run into stuff like this. So it's a good example. Okay, so now we just have to do the graph. We should have some intercepts. Uh, we've got x-intercepts at 3.9 and negative 0.9. So I'm going to use a different color for this. So 3.9 is like here, and negative 0.9 is like here. And we should have a y-intercept somewhere. Let's see. Um, seven-fourths. It's a little bit smaller than two, so it's going to be right here. So it looks like it just does something like this, right? It just does this like this, and it just comes down here like this, okay? and it comes down here like this. This follows the asymptote, so there can't be anything here, right? Here's why. If there was, boom, it would fail the vertical line test. It wouldn't even be a function, so you can't have anything there. Also, nothing up here, but look, over here, there has to be something, right? Because the domain of this function is everything except 4. So you've got to have y values, right? These are legit x values. So you might say, was well, it down here? Well, if it was down here, it wouldn't work, right? Because you would get another x-intercept. And we know that we only have 2, so that fails. So that won't work. So you know it has to be up here. Yeah, so pretty cool. No calculator. I hope this video has been helpful. Well, I cheated a little bit, right, <laughs> to get these. Good luck.